hated not being in a side. I, I just, my, you know, you're in a, you know, in your, you're in a conversation, you're in a pride. It's not an arrogance, but it's inner. I could never not be in a side. It used to hurt me internally, and that was my driving force. Hello guys and welcome back to the Art of Success. It's Ebs here and I hope you've had a, just an incredible week as always. Um, if this is the first time you are listening, this podcast is all about inspiration, motivation and strategies for achieving success in life. So I get to sit down with some amazing people I've met through my journey who've achieved awesome things and I'm trying to impact what has made them successful for a book I'm writing. Um, just a little bit about my background, I'm a former elite athlete, I'm a broadcaster and I'm also passionate about mindset and what it takes to achieve our potential. Um, so lots to go in another episode, we're in episode 012 or 12, um, I'm never going to get away from that, sorry everybody. Um, and yeah, I'm really loving this journey. Uh, this week I was doing a talk actually for NatWest, a motivational talk to their brand team and I was trying to break down the growth mindset which I don't know if anyone either heard the earlier version of Maggie Alfonso talking about it she's the the England rugby player um, and also it's a, it's a book that's been written by Carol Dweck where they research the beliefs and the practices of people that really do fulfill fill their potential and manage to lead to that success and when I was editing this one this week I was just going through and it's like a tick box of a winning mindset. It's very short. It's uh, about 28 minutes of talking. But this week I sit down with Cyril Regis, MBE, who's a former England footballer, predominantly played for West Bromwich, um, Albion and Coventry City. He had a career spanning 19 years, 614 league appearances and 158 league goals. I mean, so he's he's achieved incredible things through the game, now still works in it as an agent, seeing the next generation of talent coming through. Um, and I was also fascinated by the football world because it is a bit of a religion or a tribal kind of culture, which must bring massive pressure. So I really wanted to hear how he handled it. And there were so many good things coming out of this episode. Some of the key things I would say to listen out for is how he talks about using the mantra of turning a negative into a positive. So almost turning things around. Um, some of the examples he gave is having to experience some racial abuse that he experienced in the 70s, being one of the only few black footballers and having to just go through things which to me seem un unimaginable. I would hate to have had to experience that. But he talked about how he used that as fuel to, to propel his game forward and how he always took on those criticisms as a way to drive him forward more, um, which was just great to hear him talk about. Um, another thing that I really loved hearing him delve into is what you do when confidence is low. Um, which happens to us all, you know, we all get into those tough times. Um, and he had a really clear way of breaking down how to do that and perform under pressure. And he had this brilliant description of how he, one, reinforced his self-talk, two, he separated his performance from his ability. So he didn't see himself as a bad person. He just saw his form as not in a good place. And then he also talked about how he just focused on getting six out of tens, almost just being professional and just focusing on the small things that you could almost just get the small wins until that confidence was back. And and if you listen to him go through, I thought we could apply that to any area of life when we're not on fire, just keeping ourselves ticking. I mean, I wish if I'd have listened to that before I went out to play golf this week. I've got a new best mate, Dave, who I've been going out to play golf with. I'm on a mission to try and get a handicap down to 10 and I'm not starting very well. I've got a lot of technical changes to make. I'm trying to get my head around it all. And uh, on the fourth tee this week, after driving two balls into the water straight in front of me off my driver, I pretty much kicked the third ball. I was so angry, ready to give up, just thinking, why am I doing this to myself? Pointless. Confidence is low. Thought there's no hope. And Dave said the same sort of thing about just focusing on getting the six out of tens, just nudging your irons up there, just making sure you hit it on the free uh, fairway, just simple, simple things. And by the end of the round, my confidence was back up. Um, and you know, my, my ability to just do the simple things started to happen. I thought, you know, it's a really good, 
system that Cyril's going to take us through today on on building that confidence and layering up till you get to that point you're ready. There was so much to take away. And actually, for the first time ever in an episode, I brought in a second person. I brought in his wife, Julia Regis. She works um, with organisations to develop people and really interesting to hear about how, you know, she looks to get the best out of people. Um, we talked a lot about mentoring. She's been really inspirational since I've met her as well. And and that bit towards the back end of the podcast, uh, you know, I, I found it inspirational. I almost wanted to take clips out and just play it back to myself, listen to them both inspire us. So, so, so much to take away today. As always, if you have any questions, get in touch on social media. Any thoughts, questions, suggestions uh, will be much appreciated. So enjoy, sit back for a short but sharp and really entertaining podcast. Uh, right, Cyril and Julia, thank you first of all for taking time to, um, well, first of all, play golf. <laughs> um, we didn't, I didn't do very well, well, but we had some good shots. You guys, it was good were, fun. It was good fun, great wasn't fun, yeah, it? Great so fun. thank you. And, and I really you did nice have some good shots. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. yeah it was good fun. Yeah. Um, so as you know, I'm, like I said, I'm interviewing people for a book. You're on the top of my list of people that I really wanted to. So ask you a little bit about your career. Um, and kind of unpick some things that helped you be successful, a bit about mindset, maybe things that you learned along your journey. Um, just as a background, I've got some stats on your you're ni- 19 years as a professional footballer. So I've got that you kind of span from 77 to 96. Mm. Um, 614 league appearances, you scored 158 league goals. Do you know those stats, by the way? Um, vaguely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> vaguely, yes. Yeah, so yeah. you know a bit about your career. And obviously, you know, you had some time with England, but your main clubs as well were West Bromwich Albion and Coventry City. So, you know, you've played in a sport, I guess. How do I, Football in this country, to me, is like... Uh, how do you describe it? It's like an obsession. It's the sport. It's like a, it's it's like the a religion sport. for It's like people. a religion. So we're talking pressure, we're talking eyes on you. Mm. You've gone through that environment. What you know, what was it like being a footballer and did you enjoy that pressure? Did you enjoy the challenge? <coughs> yes, I did. I mean, first and foremost, you love uh, playing football and that encompasses, you know, your teammates, uh, social skills, banter, laughter, the fact, the synergy of uh, being in a team, right, an individual. Um, you know, sometimes you can play well and your teammates don't play well, you get them out of a jail. Uh, you play badly and your teammates play well, you get out of jail. So I love team sports mm. for that camaraderie, uh, the synergy that comes with it. And the fact that you don't have to be technically the best, but if you've got team things like synergy, team spirit, winning mentality, togetherness, you know, all those kind of spiritually mm. un, unmeasurable things in a team, you can achieve great things. Mm. Uh, and that's what I love about it. And I think one of the main things I've learned uh, is, is in a point is turn a negative into a positive. Mm. That's one of the key things as a football agent, I talk young kids, is life is not pretty, it's not always great. But it's what you do with your emotion that counts. Because mm. I've seen players who uh, they have been told they're great and they sit back and think it's always going to happen. They don't go and I would say, go out and justify you're great. And I've, t- I've seen people say, oh, you're rubbish. Well, go and prove they're wrong. So if you can turn it in your head into mm. motivation, right, I'm going to show you, then you can never lose out. Okay, so I like dr- drilling in a little bit on that. Um so first of all, to have the mindset to turn a negative into a positive, if, is that something you learnt? So did someone educate you on how to turn it around or were you naturally quite a optimistic? Yeah, and naturally quite an optimistic sort of person. But also, if you look back in the 70s, late 70s, there's no black players playing. Mm. Mm. So it was, it was me, Laurie Cunningham, Brandon Batson and Viv Anderson. Viv Anderson yeah. only, only black players in the late 70s. Uh, they was uh, in the early 80s uh, Clyde Best Eddie Coker and a couple of others but in late se- in late 70s only four black players so three at West Brom so how do you cope you cope a mechanism where you've got uh, you're going three black black players going to Chelsea mm. Millwall Leeds Newcastle and getting 10,000 people shouting racist abuse how do you deal with it how do you deal with oh, it? I wow. don't know. I'm hearing this something. This sounds a bit hard work to me. God. And, and what's, do you know what's really interesting as well is, you know, as being a black female, I've experienced 
versions of racism, but I'm way past mm. anything your generation would. So I do, but I'm interested. Mm. Like, how do you handle well, that? Well, if you've got 10,000 people shouting racial abuse, throwing bananas on a pitch, saying you letters, the whole works, you know, look in your face and call you black seas and you know, kunti kente, the whole works, mm. then it's emotional. It makes you angry. Now, you can either use that emotion in a, I don't want to play, or get upset, or let it affect your game. Or you can turn around and say, right, I'm going to work hard, put that ball on the better net, win, win the game and go, thank you very much. And it was confined to the stadium, so you look at, how, how can I get back at you? Mm. The only way you can do that is by performing. Okay, so you internalise it and use its motivation. So in some ways you've turned it into a bit of a purpose, as in a mission or something that gives you... Yeah, energy. yeah, and one hundred percent. No, motivation is energy. Mm. You know, you go right. You know, you're having a go at me. I want to show how good I am, and you get that in sport anyway, mm. naturally. Because if you're not playing well, back in our day, the managers give you a rollicking. Mm. What do you think you are? You're not playing. So you have to respect reaction. So it's your reaction all the time, and your actions it can be you know make you feel ten foot tall. Sure, you're brilliant. You're the best thing since sliced bread. I love you in this team. You don't get complacent and think, oh, I'm the man. Mm. You go out and justify it. You know, so the manager, a good manager, will know when to press the buttons to either give you a kick mm. or make you feel 10 foot tall. Depends on your personality, depends on situations where this individual or collective. Collectively, you can go, you as a... R-, and an individual pull somebody aside and go, well, you know what, didn't do too well today because he might react differently in a, in a group situation, mm. digging him out. But the old style managers used mm. to dig you out and you had to have character to, to react. Them. Yeah, yeah. React and go, right, I'm going to show you. Because if you couldn't handle that, and that's not, not just managers, but players, mm. strong players in your side. When you didn't do your job or you was a bit lazy or you didn't track your man, strong players would then go and go, you didn't do your And they're on you. And, well, yeah. You've been there. Yeah. Okay, so talk to me a bit about resilience then because I, I think this is a key characteristic that people who go on and achieve success, whether it's through sport, business, whatever, have. Where did you develop, if you look, and I'm not just talking about during your career dealing with some of these issues, where do you think that ability to have resilience came from or perseverance? <laughs> I mean, I, I started to work at 13. Hmm. You know, milk round, paper round, you know, working in little shops, uh, stacking shelves. Take it all summer, work with my mum. So you develop a bit of character. You develop when you, you it asks you to do things you didn't want to do, but you had to do. So you develop character. You develop a, a mindset that, yes, there's a purpose. Uh, there's, 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 um, there's a goal at the end of it, which is finance or satisf- job satisfaction. Uh, but, but most it's a uh, uh, kind of inner it's an inner satisfaction that you've done something even though you didn't want to do it but you've pushed through to do something and so therefore it's character building mm. and I think back in the 60s and 70s when you know it was it, it wasn't as protected as it is today you used to play football on the streets no it was not no, no organised football no you just had 20 lads playing the game of football you manage yourselves they didn't say well you're too big and you're too small he's too big you just went out there you got kicked you had a fight you know, you, you learn to be on the front foot and defend yourself. And so there's a little bit of edge, edge uh, about you that you you wouldn't take no for an answer. Or you'd, you know, you, you'd, have a, you'd have a pushback, you'd, you'd have a comeback. And I think um, that mentality, especially what you need in sport, especially in football, because it's competitive. There's a healthy thing called competition for places. Mm. Now, you know, there's only 11 people. 25, 27 a team if you want to play you better get in the side play well to stay in the side so therefore that competitive is like if you don't play well mm. you don't play and if you don't play you're out the door talk to me about okay so one thing I find interesting is there's a lot of talented people and you would have seen a lot of people come through with talent um, but didn't make that leap what what do you think the difference is that makes people make that leap I think it's what they haven't got because you've got talent talent is not the issue mm. That in broad in broad terms, for me, being a football agent for 15, 15 years, they fall down on broadly three areas. Three, three areas. One, passion, emotion, love, desire, hunger. Two, character. 
when things are going wrong, when you're told you're not good enough, when you know you've missed the goal and the crowds are having to go at you, how do you react? And three, attitude. Attitude can encompass mental strength, winning mentality, sacrifice, discipline, you know, a commitment, all those things. Uh, and so what I find is a lot of these players, talent is not an issue. Mm. They fall down on one of those three things in a big way. And that's why you think he's highly talented, but he's playing non-league somewhere. Mm. It's a drive. And they might have all that, but then can you go out and play in front of 20,000 people and perform? And handle the pressure. Handle the pressure. Okay, how's, how did you decide? And actually, I'd like you to think back to as long, young as you can on when you knew you were hungry for football. So it's, it's something that's been a big thing in your life. Can you think back to when you knew you had that drive? Hated not being on the side. I, I just, my, you know, you're in a, in a, in your, you're in a conversation. You're in a pride. It's not an arrogance, but it's inner. I, I could never not be on the side. It used to hurt me internally, and that was my driving force. If the, I, I couldn't understand, I couldn't, I couldn't hear Siri on the bench. It, it was not an affront to me internally. I wouldn't throw my gloves out and I, but my internal mechanism, can't get out. It's, it's, a it's like a real grit of... Oh, oh. hurts. It hurts That's not really, being inside. I love that as a quote. I think I might put that as a quote in itself. It hurts, like, because when you want something... It hurts not being inside. Yeah. It hurts, hurts me. So, so therefore, when I'm in, when I'm on the pitch, I'm going to play so well mm. that I don't get dropped. Mm. So that drive that's, was a... That's the drive, because it hurts me not being inside. I, what? I can't be in that side. Yeah. What? Did you need motivation then? So I, I I think of my career, and there's some days where you wake up and you loved it, and it just all flowed, and your body feels great. And then there's days where I was like, my body hurts, I'm in bad form, um, and I struggle. Did you did you always feel motivated, or did no. you have to do things? No, it's hard work. I'm Like you, there's times where... You, you, you're not informed. You're getting stick from the press. You're missing goals. Your touch is poor. But that's. I also say, young players, there's a word in front of football. It's called professional. Mm. That's really yeah. I like that. So therefore, every you know, if, if you're at work on a building site or a train station in the office, you still got issues. But when you go to work, you've got to deliver. And so. The key thing as a, as a footballer is to try and be in that zone where you're not causing so much upset outside of football. So therefore, when you're playing, you're free just to concentrate on football. That's interesting. Okay, talk to me about um, some of your biggest challenges. So if you could, whether it's a setback that you can think of or any, a challenge, what was one of your biggest that you can... Well, injury is always a challenge. Injury is always a challenge and going up to the next level. Uh, and deal with expectation. Uh, those those things are really really challenging, where people expect from you, and and I, and I think as well is having to go out there in front of thirty forty thousand people when you are low in confidence, but no one knows that. And people see you, don't you? See, people see you out there in front of fifty thousand people. You think, oh, what a footballer, great. But internally, mm. your touch ain't right. You're not confident. You got issues off the pitch. And then you have to go out there and perform. That's a lonely place. So, how did you do it? Do you understand what I'm, I'm saying? If you're in that change, like for some people, they just run, just go right. I'm done with it. Well, what is it that you said to yourself that made you make that, even though you didn't feel um, self belief mm. that you've always got talent? It's not there, and you work out that it's form that's lost, not your ability. Mm. It's just your form, not your ability. So you hang in there, you, you go back and you train, you work harder, you talk to yourself, listen, I'm not I'm just going through a bad time, let me dig in, let me go and work, let me do a little bit more, uh, and it will come round. And it's, what I find in sport, later in my life, is dealing when you're not, can you get a, a six out of 10 when you're not confident? So when you're in a flow and you're confident and it's automatic, you're eight or nine. It's dealing when you're not confident. Can I get a game? Six and a half, seven out of ten. Mm. So therefore, we always say, just get back to basics. And basics is just doing it very, very granular. 
control it, pass it, control it, pass it, control it, pass it. You get a six, out of t- six out of ten. Now, when your confidence come, you're, you're moving, you're popping it, you are, you're being creative, you're not making people, you're twisting, you're turning, because it's automatic. You're in the flow. He's recognised you when you're in the flow. You don't try to do things which is you can't do because you're not on form. He's recognised when you're on form and not form, and then he's saying, well, when I'm not on form, keep it basic. So you get it six and a half out of ten. But when you're on form, it's automatic. You just, oh. And it took me to get to peak maybe 10 years. For peak, that's mm. having 10 years in the game. I think the weakest part of a player is the mind. The strongest is the body. The weakest part in the mind. So what you, what you find, like, you get tossed and turned when you're down there. Your mind's down there. Your body's down there. Criticism up and down you know everything goes at you and you're all, you're flaky one year two years three years four years in the game ten years you're like that mm. eight ten years like that and it's and it's peak you think oh, your body's strong you've been ten years in the game ups and downs you can handle situations and then you go like that your mind's even stronger I still think I could play football now but my body's ten seconds behind <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. your body's miles behind yeah. so you just go you know what I give up but your mind still there still sharp your body can't do it no more yeah that's interesting okay so I ask everybody this question um, if you were to nail it down and say there's one thing that's been responsible for your success so just the one thing that has been responsible no, for most what is it and you can't dilly around it's only one thing self belief self belief internal driving force is a self belief that you know I'm a good player I want to I want to play it um, I should be in the side internal that internal conversation of yourself that self belief that, that gets you that, that's got me through a lot of self doubt a lot of negativity a lot of criticism you know I'm a good player so there's good building blocks yeah so where did you get that from <sighs> performance people telling me Results, early upbringing. Yeah, people telling me mm. since I was younger, oh, you're a good player, you. And, and results because you're banging in goals, and you can see the fear in defenders' faces, and you're going past people, and that confidence comes in. You're thinking, oh, I'm a good player. I might always show it all the time, but I'm a good player. All I need to be is more consistent. Mm. So there's self belief there, and 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 attributes, attributes. I was quick. I was powerful. Mm. So you started with your gifts and your talent. Gifts and your talent. I and was then, quick and powerful. Yeah. My touch wasn't always the best, but I did. But um, I, I think, I knew what I was good at. Power, pace, good in the air. Worked some stuff in my game. You always got to work on stuff in your game. Mm-hmm. One thing I was very sure of was stamina. Never had stamina, just not naturally. Mm. Got stamina, but if you come from pace and power, aggression in the right in the right sense power you know mm. work work working um, angles out working strikers out knowing working out their strengths towards Which my strengths self-awareness, as well, self-awareness extent, yeah. but reading the other person or reading reading the game reading attention to the game and being clinical and not being not having fear in the right in the wrong time mm. if you're a striker which is you're the end, end, end result everybody works works for you to score 80% of your goals are made by other people. Mm. So you're at the end of the line, which is a lot of pressure, a lot of glamour. Mm. And so therefore, mentally, you can be so high on a, on a goal, which is so important to get you through the semi-finals. Mm. But the following, the following week, you can miss an open goal that loses you three points. And you're <sighs> so emotionally, you can go up one minute and down the next thing. And so therefore, you've got to train your mind and be steady. Mm. Don't get too up, don't get too down bang it's a job and does that mindset help you now through life as yes. in it's something you can apply yeah all day that's why sport's great in terms of of developing mindsets and you can carry on to your into your life mm. I'm going to bring you in here Julia because I'm going to obviously Cyril's wife but um, I remember as soon as I met you the first time um, I thought wow uh, inspirational woman you were straight away kind of mentoring me in terms of when we sat down <laughs> and I we were just having a conversation on the golf course because you work with people don't you like yeah that's your background just talk a little bit about your background because I want to delve into some of the conversations we had today on the golf course but talk about what you do with people what your what sure. you see your role is first and then 
And so, then I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. So essentially, my role is around organisational development. Mm. So anything to do with helping a company, a business, an organisation grow through their people, mm. uh, that's where I will come in. So that could include uh, delivering training, leadership training, assisting with a change management programme, um, helping to change the culture of an organisation. Um, I do lots of coaching, executive coaching mm. of, of business owners and leaders. So essentially anything that's going to help an organisation grow through their people. So this is what what's interesting about this process, as you know, like I'm picking up bits as I'm speaking to different people about mindset and how people grow and how people develop. Um, one of the biggest things that I thought has become interesting for my is how people use mentors, how people use sure. coaches yeah. to get results i think some people are born with good building blocks of belief good building blocks and some need to develop it if you're working with somebody um how far can we coach people to improve their levels of performance is it something that you when you look at people you go that person's going to be all right because they've naturally got it or do you think oh i've got room to push this person and they you know and you're yeah yeah i mean i i as a coach i don't see my role as is to push the individual Mm. um i come from the premise uh that you know my belief is that everybody has greatness within them and some people just need some help in helping to them to see that they do have that greatness within them others will need help in understanding how to get bring that greatness to the Mm. surface so Mm -hmm. to speak so i see my role as just helping that person navigate through a terrain of murkiness which includes, you know, life, life experiences, things that people have said to them that have taken root in their minds and their hearts and are, are holding them back, you know, the opinions of other people. Um, I just see my role as helping them to navigate through all of that terrain. Mm. But I start with the premise that they already have the, the answer within them. So you have the belief, in some ways, you have the yeah. belief that they have it. So Absolutely. that becomes a yeah. facilitator of In funnel. itself, yes. That's really fascinating. Mm. That is really fascinating. But, uh, sorry, I'm think I'm processing. I'm talking about. I find that's really fascinating. Okay, and we were talking about mentors. Now, I think um, it's something that I maybe subconsciously have picked up coaches through my career or different people. But now I want to be a bit more strategic about okay. it and go right. If I want to get from A to B, what sort of people? What do you look for in a mentor? You know, you've done mentoring. Sure. What? What advice, and you've most probably also used other people mm, in your life. What, what do you think about using mentors? How have they helped you? And yeah, I'll start with that. It, uh, I, clearly, I'm going to be a big advocate mm. of people using mentors and, mm. and also being a mentor themselves. We can all live in both of those spaces at the same time because there's always somebody that you can build help to, to give a leg up mm. um, and to help them develop in their character or their career whatever it it is the area is that you need um, some mentoring while still looking to grow yourself so therefore looking at who is currently exhibiting either success and again you can have a discussion about what Mm. success means but who's exhibiting success in an area that I'm aspiring to achieve who has the character traits who's overcome in a certain area Mm. um, uh, that I'm interested in overcoming and approach that individual to to perhaps mentor them mm. so so basically you're saying decide what it is you want or what and then look for people who and that's really important i think you need to if you're going to ask someone to mentor you you need to be very clear about what you're asking them to mentor the area that you're mm. asking them to mentor you in if you're not sure what that area is and, and quite often people say i don't know what's blocking me but i know i need to move to the next level i'd suggest getting some coaching mm. Uh, in some instances even counselling because mm. you know some of the, the challenges that people um, experience as blockages you know link back to things that need to be unpacked properly mm. I'm a big big advocate of, of counselling mm. I think there's a stigma attached in some uh, settings uh, and I think we need to, to eradicate that because it's a great tool that can help us to you know unpack and resolve issues that mm. will enable us to fly in our lives mm. but absolutely know what it is that you want from that person Mm -hmm. so when you approach them you're not going to waste their time you're going to be very clear about what it is you think that they can give you Mm. and if they can't provide that support they'll then be able to tell you Mm. and hopefully signpost you in the direction where you can get that support Mm. Cyril did you have any mentors or coaches that you can think back to that 
as a kid or mm. growing up? No. No, I had people who believed in me. Mm. Which is so powerful, anyway. That yeah. you've got Absolutely. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, over, over, over my my career, uh, even before being a professional footballer, I had people who believed in me. Or, or saw something in me, and they encouraged me. It wouldn't. It wasn't more mentorship, but uh, you know, you're a good player. Mm. You make it, you. You know that sort of thing. Wow. Okay. Last question. This is the question mm. I can ask. Can I say something? Oh, like jump that. in on that. Yeah. Exactly. I think I think that's a really um, powerful statement to make. Somebody believed in you, and mm. sometimes we do need to borrow other people's belief mm. in us. Yeah. Because you can, you can you know be facing a challenge at work, or you have the opportunity to branch out into a new uh, field in your career or to um, apply for a promotion and you're wavering mm. but just the fact that you've got other people around you that believe in you you can step into that for mm. that moment that period of time and say well, they think I can do it maybe I can and we sometimes mm. underestimate how powerful it can be and don't often enough affirm and encourage people that are around us I think that I'd go on from that. It's the same thing. Is you're not sometimes you're not aware of the perception of yourself. Hmm. That's dig, good. dig that bit deeper. You're it? not aware of the perception of yourself. Mm. Now you don't know what what people are saying, what they think about you. Oh, that's good. Do you know what I'm saying? You're not aware of your perception. You give an aura. You give a confidence. You've done things, but you. you if you, you don't know mm. and sometimes people need to tell hey you are a good player because mm. you know, sometimes mm. whatever uh, life has thrown at you you may lack a little bit of confidence or self-awareness but you don't know your own perception mm. so you, other people see you know what like, you know what he's a good businessman him mm. hey come along yeah, what you do? they can see something they can see traits about you sometimes you don't see yourself through whatever thing yeah, that's really it. So many people have said that. We are, we are our own worst critic, aren't we? Mm. You know, I know from experience, I can go and, and, and do a keynote presentation and walk away thinking, that was awful. I made a mistake here. I didn't say what I wanted to say here. Um, I could feel my knee shaking here. And I'm just focusing on the things that I feel I did mm. wrong. And you go out into the audience and everybody's just so excited, so overwhelmed, really been impacted, you know, been inspired, mm. um, learned some new things. Um, and it was all great and that's why I think the role of being a cheerleader in our friends and family's lives is so important so you know being there to support and encourage and sit on the front row and, and whoop whoop and, and you know, yeah, give them give them the encouragement in the moment mm -hmm. you know I, I personally take the view unless someone asks me for feedback mm -hmm. unless it's in a professional capacity unless someone asks me for feedback I won't give them necessarily my constructive critique I'll just empower and encourage mm. and that's not to be dishonest but actually it needs to come from the right people so I'm going to ask you both this question Julia I'll start with you this is the last question I'm going to ask you I want you to think back to a five-year-old self mm -hmm. and say so you could give them one piece of advice that's going to help you achieve success in mm -hmm. your life what's that one bit of advice I, I, I would say it links to what Cyril said earlier um, that you are great and to believe that to believe that you can accomplish your God-given potential and purpose. You have one that's uniquely um, uh, designed for just you. Nobody else can fulfill that role, just you. So work on becoming the best version of you. I got cold when I just heard that. You could actually clip that out and play that as a little clip to yourself if you said that. So you're all right, one piece of I advice. I agree with that. I believe, and I say this all the time, you are born with a talent. Mm -hmm. You are born with a talent. The key thing is finding what that talent is and then honing it. That's good. That's it. You are, having that belief, what, what am I born with? Some, everywhere is, you know, academia, sports-wise, music, singing, writing, everybody's born with a talent. Mm -hmm. Now, finding it out and then uh, working with that, because it's a love. Now, if you're working, if you're working uh, in a situation where you love what you do, it's not work. It doesn't mean it's not hard or difficult or troubling, but it's a fair of the heart. It's a fair of the heart. And if you can find it, fair of the heart, and you, and you can earn from it and deliver mm. from it. Even better. Wonderful. 
Guys, I've just got a little bit cold, actually, some of that stuff. You guys are so inspirational, and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, pleasure. You were going to make the book, and uh, obviously, great to have you on the podcast. Oh, pleasure. Wish pleasure. you all the best with it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And there we have the end of a, an epic interview. I really enjoyed that one. I have to say, Cyril and Julia, thank you so much for your time, because it was just some real nuggets of wisdom. Um, a few reflections. First of all, a silly question to kick off with after running down some of the points of his CV going, oh, are you aware of those stats? Well, of course he's aware of those stats. He just spent his life achieving these things. So not not the smartest of questions, but you live and you learn. Um, some other key reflections that are less to do with myself and more to do about the learning are one, I really liked his statement, train your mind to be steady. I'll repeat that again, train your mind to be steady. And I think he said it took him 10 years to get to his peak and the weakest part is the mind. And I like that when he was saying, you know, when things are going great, not to get too far ahead of yourself. And also when things are not going so well, to not let yourself sort of drag yourself down either. It's kind of finding that sweet spot um, and keeping yourself steady. And I suppose if we can find that consistency, it allows that the peaks and the troughs to not overtake us and being able to I suppose perform longer in whatever our pursuit is so I loved that concept and something to uh, definitely apply to my golf but in life as well another uh, takeaway um, which I found really powerful towards the back end and maybe it's because I don't know like a lot of people what you go through self-doubts and you know things like that um, and one thing Julia said and Uh, Cyril also backed it up was about borrowing other people's belief in you so whether you use a mentor or not um, that sometimes we're not aware of the perception of ourselves what we're capable of um, and other people can almost instill that to help us make the next step and and therefore how important it is for us to be a cheerleader in our friends and family's life to give them that support as well so it's almost a two-way train of borrowing other people's beliefs and always sharing Um, that positivity I try myself often to try and be as positive as I can with friends and family because I know how hard things can be I usually always say go for something rather than not just because um, you want to support and keep people moving forward so that 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 really um, those few words towards the back end of the podcast I found really inspirational and almost you want to listen to that I'd want to listen to that on a loop Um, it was a good old pump me up actually there was a a good quote I used in the the speech I did earlier this week actually which came from Travis Rice who is a snowboarder and he says we'll never know what our full potential unless we push ourselves to find it and I think those were the messages of that we heard from both Julia and Cyril at the end about what they would say to their younger self is about believing in the talent believing in your potential and I guess going out and finding out what that is so Guys, I hope you've been motivated and inspired this week as I have listening to uh, both of these incredible people and another short and sweet podcast wrapped up. Hope you check in next week. Of course, any questions, feedback, suggestions, as always, get in touch on social media, website. My Twitter is at EJ Rainford Brent. Have a fantastic week, guys. Mm-hmm.